Good morning, everyone. I hope you all had a great weekend. We have some big stories to discuss today. The first piece of big news is a new game fix and feature. Rockstar has added two Red Dead Online networks that grant players the ability to have their own solo lobby instead of being disconnected if they have a poor internet connection. And with that change also comes new methods for creating solo lobbies on demand on your own if you don't want to wait for that. And then as of last night, we also have evidence of Rockstar, but really Take-Two Interactive investigating the creators of GTA Online and Red Dead Online mod menus. These are the ones for PC, and this all happens at a very interesting time, so let's get started. Just a reminder, the weekly Red Dead Online update is coming tomorrow morning on Tuesday, and I'll have a video going over all the news for you, so if you enjoy this video at any point, or if you just find it helpful, let me know by dropping a like on this video, and if you want to stay up to date and in the loop with everything Red Dead Redemption 2 and Red Dead Online, consider hitting that subscribe button with your bell notifications turned on. So let's talk about the Red Dead Online network changes and the solo lobby first. If you have actively been playing this game and you usually have poor internet connection when you play, it's more than likely a disconnect has happened where you get kicked from whatever lobby and activity you're in and a network error text pops up on screen saying you have been disconnected from Red Dead Online due to an error and then a string of numbers follows which is that specific error that your internet and that your system had. Now that should not happen anymore or at least it should happen a lot less and not happen in the exact same fashion because over the weekend, we saw some new backend changes on the networking side of Red Dead Online that would prevent these disconnects. And what happens now is if a player's internet connection experiences some type of interruption on their network and their ping spikes or their router gets bogged down by buffer bloat, they won't get disconnected from the game anymore. What happens instead when you're a player is a notification in the top left hand side of the screen will pop up where other in-game notifications pop up and it will say that you have changed sessions due to a network error. Now, oddly enough, what happens here is now a player will be in a lobby completely to themselves. It's sort of like a suspended state lobby because there's no visible change on that player's end and they may not even know what's happening besides the time change on their end, but there's no loading screen or anything like that that would give it away. And if you are in the middle of a mission or activity when this happens, there's basically no interruption to that at all. So don't worry about being in the middle of a trader or a moonshiner wagon sale and failing it because you changed sessions automatically and lost everything. You can still deliver the wagon with absolutely no problems, now just without other players who can blow you up. And it's such a clean transition that you truly may not even know it's happening to you unless you're playing with a posse or of course you keep an eye on that player count constantly and this change is great for a few reasons for one disconnects were way too common before even with players with good internet if you had like eight ping on some games and you had a thousand up a thousand down for internet google fiber you had perfect internet connection you had nasa internet connection you still disconnect from red dead online for some reason even though your internet was flawless it doesn't matter if you were using ethernet or wi-fi your nat type was open moderate or closed it really wouldn't make a difference at all. Now, with RDO's peer-to-peer -peer connection, some games would almost be unplayable because of the lag you encountered with other players. That would be the second reason here, so that has improved on this end. And the third reason is players get all the benefits now, whereas before they were just punished for their internet connection time and time again. Even if it was just a step down from being flawless internet, you can imagine how much worse it would be if players with the best of the best internet connection were getting disconnected constantly. Now, not only that, but we also had new backend changes to the pop populated lobbies in Red Dead Online, where Rockstar has yet again increased player counts back to what they were intended to be. Originally, this game was supposed to be able to hold 32 players per session, but very early on in the Red Dead Online beta, this was changed to the mid-20s, and then you would at most see maybe around 24 players unless you got a bunch of friends to join you in a particular session, and over the past few months, player counts have hovered around 20 players per lobby, and now we've returned to the 20 to 24 players per session part of the game. Red Dead Online has been plagued with bugs and glitches since launch, and a huge part of this has been because of high player counts. The edge servers Rockstar uses to host a lobby, also followed by the immense power it takes for these outdated consoles to communicate with everyone else, has been causing massive in-game issues in regards to where NPCs and animals spawn, where they are in comparison to other players' coordinates, etc. Because remember, this game is using peer-to-peer -peer connection. The edge servers in discussion here aren't dedicated servers, so they aren't solving these issues. But the recent player count increase in lobbies 
abilities also should be something here that's not feared as it seems Rockstar has finally increased player counts in the game and also figured out the animal and NPC spawning and the disconnection issues as well. Animals have had really good spawns since the Naturalist update and while changes to player counts in the past have led to these issues Rockstar was trying to solve, this time it's all good to go so it appears there will be no need to reverse these changes because they actually work and the game doesn't break again because of it. So hopefully this all stays in the game. So lots of big news from over the weekend but now we have our final story from last night and I think I may come out with a dedicated video on this topic because more than just the news we need to have a discussion on it and we're going to talk about it right now. Take Two Interactive and Rockstar Games seem to be pursuing the creators of GTA Online's most famous and malicious mod menus. Now before I hopped in bed last night I was scrolling through Twitter and I saw Gilly Masters tweet about mod menus getting investigated by Take Two and he said apparently Take Two are targeting mod menu services now when my friend sent me this. This is from lunacheats.org. Now when looking at the cheat makers website you can see their announcement of services no longer being offered. After discussions with Take-Two Interactive, we are immediately ceasing all maintenance, development, and distribution of our cheap menu services. We'll also be donating our proceeds to charity designated by Take-Two. We apologize for any and all problems our software has caused to the Grand Theft Auto Online community. Now, Luna Cheats was one of the larger mod menus players would use for GTA Online, so not only could they spawn in billions of dollars for themselves and their friends, but they could also use malicious features that were included with most of the other prominent and undetected mod menus on the market right now. We touched on this over the summer, right after the Naturalist update, when myself and my friends on Twitch were harassed by someone using these mod menus every single day. Anyone with these mod menus can target and harass any player they want with complete ease. It's as simple as knowing your Rockstar Social Club name, to then get a hold of your Rockstar ID, which is sort of like a private key for your account, and it's Rockstar's own way of determining whose account is whose in their records. We don't know this, we can't get this information ourselves. Typically, Rockstar wouldn't tell us this, even if we email their support team, and this is not in ID that you can change. So once someone gets it, they have it forever. And cheaters can use this to enter any session you're a part of or pull you into theirs whenever they want. It doesn't matter if you're in a mission or a PvP match, they can get into your lobby and they can pull you into theirs. Now, as you saw earlier from the new solo lobby capabilities, active in game, there's no loading screens for this. It's almost like a teleport, but it's across different sessions, if that makes sense. Now, my issue, along with my friends, was this anonymous cheater was spoofing our names, would grief each other when we were live on stream. They were spawning us miles in the sky or blowing us up, teleporting the entire lobby to us and blowing us all up, disguising their name as ours so it looked like me or another streamer were the actual people blowing people up it was just overall a mess they can crash your game through this rockstar id can hit you offline whenever they want and they could also get information like your isp your internet service provider your coordinates how much health your player has how much health your horse has what direction you're heading in game they can get your email attached to your social club account and they can also get the zip code the city the state the country and even the region of where you're from if you're playing in the same session as one of these people now this is why i wanted to make my own video on it because there's a lot to break down more than i want to talk about here in this video but the point is is that luna cheats seems to have action taken against them by take two interactive and it's only a matter of time i think and i hope for other red dead online and of course gta online mod menu creators to have this stuff happen to them take two interactive needs to take legal action it's long been due they worry about pc modders trying to create red dead redemption on pc because it never was officially released on that or someone trying to port grand theft auto 3 over to, to the nintendo switch and they'll sue them for millions and millions of dollars but they never went after GTA Online and Red Dead Online mod menu creators who were selling these mods for like 30 bucks a month. So it's finally time they had something happen to them. So we're going to have a complete video breaking all of that down later. But with all that said, hopefully you all enjoyed the video today. Of course, if you are new to my channel and want to stay up to date with all the best Red Dead Online and Rockstar Games content, consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss out on a single thing. I don't want this video to drag on for too long, but like I said, I will have a dedicated video on Red Dead Online cheaters and more of the story around all of this and why this really Really matters here in game later on it's just a good step for rockstar and take two interactive to take for these games right now so thank you guys so much for watching and i hope to see you guys in the next red dead online update video tomorrow adios amigos